So I've y'all, it's me, it's your boy Asmongold, and I've wanted to do this video for a while. And basically what I'm going to be showing in this video is all of the different ways that people choose to go from level 85 to level 90. And I'm going to compare them all in 10 minute segments as you guys can see. There's a little uh, stopwatch on the side of my screen. And uh, each time I'm going to do it in 10 minute intervals. And the first place here that we're going to be looking at is the Timeless Isle leveling spot. Now for anybody that doesn't know, and there are a lot of people who do know, and so that is one reason why it, this is not that great of a farming spot, but uh, anyway, I'll get to that in a minute. For anyone who doesn't know, there are these little grubs that are around old Piju, and these little grubs, uh, when they basically just give you a lot of experience whenever you kill them. Now, for me personally, I don't really think this is a very good farming spot, and there's a couple of reasons why. The main reason, as you guys just saw there, is there are other people who are farming these mobs, and this spot cannot support more than one player. There are only four different, uh, I guess, like packs of grubs, and then there's a little bit. Uh, there's a couple extra ones that spawn with the rare spawn, and uh, so then you're left kind of trying to kill these. Um, uh, what are they? I don't even know what they are. These little birds, like little pelican things, and they get the same amount as the grubs, and so you're really kind of spending a lot of time like just running around waiting for these grubs to spawn. And another thing is I play on a PvP server, and so. I mean, people are just going to come and kill you, even though like level anybody under level 90 doesn't give you a coin. They're just going to kill you because you know, just to fuck with you. I mean, just to fuck your day up. Like I did that whenever I was farming coins. If I saw somebody, I'd just kill them. And so, I mean, it happens to me all the time. And so, actually, in this 10-minute clip, I do not get killed. But I can tell you, uh, a few minutes afterwards, I did get killed uh, before I left the island. And total, I got killed. I think like five times total and um so that i mean that is kind of like one of the main reasons why i don't like to farm here is because people will just they'll just kill you and then they'll kill the mobs just to fuck with you like just for, i mean for no reason but just to fuck with you but honestly if you're playing on a low pot pve server and nobody else is doing these it's 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 an okay method um in my opinion, I think it's very, very easy as range. Like, as a Frost Mage, like, it, it could not get any easier than as a Frost Mage. And so, I mean, my opinion is a little bit biased because of, you know, how easy I have it as a Frost Mage. But other than that, uh, I did do this on my Druid. It was, um, what was it? I don't even remember what he was. Who's Balance? And so, uh, you might have a little bit of trouble if you're playing a range class. But other than that, uh, this is a good viable option, but in my opinion, I think it's just on par with questing. And uh, so on a PvP server, I skip the frustration and I just go to questing mostly. But as you guys can see, I did get a pretty good amount of experience, and so it isn't that bad. Now, the second spot here that I want to show you guys is um, basically in Dreadways, where the scorpions are for the Quaxi Daily. If you kill these scorpions, uh, they're very easy to kill, and they also give a lot of experience. And I thought that it might be a good choice to go ahead and kill these uh, scorpions for experience. Now, I was actually told about this this spot by someone else, and I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Like this spot is really not all that great. Um, I think like if you guys can see, I'm getting about uh, was it 100k experience every single time I kill something. Yeah, or 89, 90, 90k experience, and. Uh, Compare that to whenever I kill this Mushan here, and how much did I get from him? 22,000. And so effectively I'm killing one mob at the price of four, and so if you can AoE things down four times as fast as you can kill the Scorpion, killing anything else would be just as effective. But uh, one thing that's good about the Scorpions is that they don't really do anything, and as range, like, there's like zero risk of me ever dying, really. I could probably aggro two of these and like a Mushan and probably be okay. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention with the Timeless Isle, though, uh, before I forget, is that I did do all of the rest of these clips are from level 89, and the Timeless Isle clip is from level 87. And so your experience from Timeless Isle uh, might be a little bit a little bit slower, but I think that you do get more experience per kill at level 89. I think you get a uh, 24k experience instead of 16k, but don't quote me on that. I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, uh, this is a good spot. Um, if you're in Dreadways and you're just sick of questing and you just want to kill some scorpions for experience, uh, you know, you might as well. Uh, one thing that is different between Mists of Pandaria and a lot of other expansions in terms of questing is that you get a large majority of your experience from actually just killing and grinding mobs. 
uh, as a comparison, um, you get 22,000 experience from killing a mob, and uh, you only get like a quarter of a mil for turning in a quest. And so, uh, killing mobs in like very good locations is definitely a very, very efficient way of 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 farming, and it's pretty much on par with questing too. And so, uh, I usually just do questing because I feel that the different challenges that the quests give me uh, help me learn my character. But also at the same time, you know, if it's a character that I'm just trying to get up, I already know how to play it, you know, from previous expansions. Uh, well, with in in real in uh in regards to this spot, I would not use this spot. I um as I said, I was suggested this spot by someone else, and I've heard other people mention this spot. But my like final verdict is you don't really want to use it. It's not the best. Um, it's a little bit worse than Timeless Isle, so. But it is less crowded, so if people are at Time Wasile, you can go there. Here is at the top of Town Long Steps. Uh, there's a little uh, little camp here of these elite Mogu guys. Now, I also saw this as a uh, video where you can get one level in an hour. And I really wanted to do this video. One of the main reasons I wanted to do it is that a lot of people on YouTube make these bullshit titles for their videos like oh you're gonna go from level 85 to level 90 in four hours if you use my my farming area and a lot of the a lot of those are lies and they just they tell you that so you click on the video and I kind of want to put together all of these different clips from all of these different areas and really compare and show you guys exactly what it looks like now the problem with this area is that uh, they are elite, and so I did have somebody helping me. Uh, for a majority of these other clips, I will have other, another person helping me, and uh, just to truly compare what is really the best farming method. Now, if you kill them on your own without having somebody help you, uh, you will get about twice as much experience. But the guy I have killing them for me is uh, in full heroic uh, Siege of Orgrimmar gear, and so he can just kill them in just a couple of seconds, and so it's definitely worth it for me to just have him kill them for me and um, they do have more health than the scorpions that we just looked at and so if you're really going to start farming these you know one by one uh, you're going to have a better a better time going and just doing the scorpions instead because they get more experience per kill because they are level 90 and these are not uh, another thing with these which is like kind of good is that there is a rare spawn that spawns here and uh, if you guys didn't notice at the beginning of the video I was uh, I was able to kill him and sometimes he drops some pretty good items, but at the at the end of the day, it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, my kind of uh, decision on this spot is it's pretty much a terrible spot to farm. I I've read that people thought that this was a good spot to get like 180 to 85, and I'll probably test that at some point. But at this point in time, getting 85 to 90 or you know anywhere in between doing this spot is absolutely not efficient and one of the main reasons why it's not efficient is that the respawn timers are so long and so and that guy doesn't even give experience we just killed him because we're bored but as you guys can see I mean the real limitation here is the respawns and so as much as I would want I mean if these were respawning infinitely or very quickly to where we never really had any downtime this would probably be the fastest spot in the game but they do respawn slowly, and so it's just, it's not really that great of a spot, honestly. Uh, it's just, I mean, I think that we got like two or three, I think like three, yeah, three or four waves of them. And so, I mean, you guys can look at the experience bar and, you know, see for yourself. This spot here is a spot that I showed in a video that uh, got pretty popular. It's got about like 5,000 views or something like that. It's the uh, the Mantid farming spot that I uh, that I kind of I don't know like really, not really invented, but I kind of I was like one of the first people I know to make a video about it. Now, what makes this spot good is that there are just so many mobs, and so you're never going to have downtime. And each mob gives 10,000 experience. Now, the downside here is mostly that the elite mobs do not give you any bonus experience. Like other elite mobs would give you like 30,000 or something like that. The elite mobs here just give you the same as uh, as a normal mob. And so it is kind of a little bit more work for, uh, you know, the same reward. But at the same time, uh, I personally, like, if I had somebody helping me farming things, uh, I would choose to go to this spot. Like, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, this is going to be the spot that I think is, is the fastest. And 
you guys can see that on the uh, on the experience bar also. And this is at level 89 and not level 87. And so I think at level 87 you'd probably get a little bit more experience or a little bit less. I'm not really entirely sure. But um, anyway, the downside, another downside is that these mobs are pretty powerful. And so my buddy here who's helping me do this, he actually uh, he actually died. I was like kind of surprised that he died, but uh, he did die. And I mean, so he's in like full heroic gear. And I mean, so you probably want to have at least pretty good gear if you want to use this farming spot efficiently. Uh, on my Warlock, I could probably do this a lot more efficiently than he does, just because Warlocks have stronger AoE cap uh, capacity than than Hunters in this, like, I don't know, specific you know, like type of uh, farming area. But honestly, uh, right down here where the stumps are, and uh, I'm going to show you guys in just a second, this is probably the best place that we found. We were just kind of going around the aisle looking for the best spot, but here is probably the best spot, especially if you don't have somebody who can just round everything up and AoE it down instantly because all of the mobs uh, are just always respawning. And so basically, by the time that you kill them all, uh, more will respawn towards the top or towards the bottom, depending on where you are. And so we pretty much spent the entire rest of this video, uh, or that's actually really not that much longer, or, or this clip, um, just killing mobs in this area. And I guess you guys can't really see, but each of, each of these guys, they give you like 10,000 experience. And so I'm getting like 10,000 experience every, I don't know, like every like 5 to 10 seconds. And so this is a very good spot to farm, especially if you have somebody who's geared helping you level. Uh, if you're doing this solo, this is not very efficient because, as I said before, the mobs are powerful and the mobs are also pretty close together. And so... You know, handling multiple level 90 mobs whenever you're not level 90 uh, can definitely be a problem. And so anyway, uh, this would be the spot that I would suggest if you have somebody who's able to help you farm. Uh, the Windward Isle is a farming spot that I've seen some other people use to uh, kind of level. And I'll show you guys where they were uh, where they were leveling too because we just like kind of like came in and like took their spot. Now, I'm going to just cut to the chase here. Uh, this is a terrible leveling spot. And you should never level here. It's just absolute complete waste of time, dog shit experience. Um, the reasons for that are mostly why this is a good farming spot is that you can collect the chests that you get from the uh, the potion of luck. You can collect them from these little turtles. But whenever you kill the turtles for experience, they only give two to three thousand experience. And so, basically, I like half of the kills that you're doing are giving you very small amounts of experience, and um, Basically, as you guys can see, the turtles are not, uh, they're not scaled to normal uh, level, st level standards. Like level 88 mob usually has about 200,000 health, 214,000 health, I think. And uh, these mobs do not. And so they're scaled to be kind of like smaller, uh, you know, just like um, swarm mobs. And uh, if you look up there, you can see these guys basically had parked out here and they're killing these egg drinkers. And... They think that it's a good idea to pretty much uh, just like sit here and kill them as they spawn. We tried this for a while. Uh, one, just to see how the farming spot was. And two, because I thought it would be funny if we camped out in their spot and then they'd get mad. And then, you know, this, that, and the other thing. You know, some excitement in World of Warcraft. But uh, they didn't really say anything to me. And uh, we just got shitty experience. So it's kind of a lose-lose. And, uh, and they also took some of our kills. Uh, if, you, if we weren't really having to compete, I would still say this is a pretty shitty spot. Uh, the tigers on the other side of the aisle are, like, okay, but I didn't really show those because there's not really all that many of them for it to be considered effective for farming. Um, other than that, like, I mean, if you do want to farm here, like, one of the good things about farming here is that there are a lot of mobs here, and um, if you're farming for gold, you can make a lot of gold here at the same time. But don't expect very fast levels. That's if you're helping somebody else level or if you're leveling, uh, you know, if you're getting somebody else to level you. You know, obviously you can kind of get some gold here, especially if you have potions of luck or whatever. You know, that it, it is pretty kind of, that's, that's kind of nice. But at the end of the day, I do not think it's very efficient at all. Um, I would not choose this spot. And another reason why this spot is good, though, is basically the mobs are very easy to kill. They do nothing. Like they do a charge uh, compared to the mantids, so through vests or whatever. Uh, the mantid over there, 
uh, these mobs are just like, they're just nothing, like they don't do anything. Uh, they, the mobs over the Mantid mobs have all kinds of different abilities and they're a lot more deadly. Uh, here I kind of wanted to show a clip of just questing. Now I'm, this is just going to be really simple. Uh, basically I'm just going to take 10 minutes of my self questing and I'm going to show you guys. Now a disclaimer here is that I am questing in Dreadways, which is probably one of the fastest questing areas in the game. And also, I'm questing in a place where I have a lot of different quests turned in at the same time. And so, uh, other people might experience slightly less uh, quest experience per hour uh, than I do, just because of the nature of like when, like where I was in the quest line, because there's a, a lot of quests here going on at the same time. It's hard talking for 15 minutes without stopping. Holy shit. My mouth is getting dry. Anyway. So, questing, I think, is probably one of my... It's just kind of the way I do leveling most of the time. Uh, unless I have somebody to help me. Because basically, if you have somebody to help you, usually there's some sort of um, consideration going both ways. And so, they're like, oh, well, if I help you... Like, the guy I, uh, I had helping me for the video, I gave him 1,500 gold. And so I could be 1,500 gold richer and basically be in the same spot with uh, more class experience than I would have if I just had somebody killing mobs for me while I was jumping around in circles. And so while well, I understand a lot of people just want to get to level 90 as fast as possible, I think that if you get to level 90 and you don't know how to play your class, uh, you know, you're going to have to spend that time in one way or another. And so that's why I kind of, uh, as I said, I just kind of like to do questing. But uh, at the same time, I've, like, whenever the Duker Dome was a big thing, that uh, was kind of a while ago, uh, I did have, like, I think three or four characters leveled that way. But anyway, those actually were characters that I'd played um, in an in game scenario in previous expansions. Not necessarily as my mains, but I'd played them, you know, in, like, the current heroic content for whenever they were, like, my main alts or whatever. And uh, as you can see here, like, I do get a pretty good amount of experience from turning in all these quests, and obviously, um, as I said before, you're probably not going to get quite as much of a reward from questing as I'm getting right now, just because I was in the middle of doing five quests at the same time, and uh, it kind of it's, questing is is odd because it it slows down and speeds up pretty much at random, or not really random, but that's just the nature of it. Uh, personally, as I said, I do do questing most of the time unless I have some sort of, I don't know, like way to get leveled up faster. Now, uh, one thing that people have been doing that I wasn't really sure how efficient it was, was pet battles. Now, basically, uh, you want to set up a team. Now, I'm kind of I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone here, and I'm leveling up some of my pets to level 10 for an achievement, and at the same time, I'm leveling myself up. And as you can see here, each pet battle I complete gives me between 170 to uh, 200,000 experience. And so it's almost like turning in like a level like 89 or a or not level 88 quest uh, somewhere around there, maybe like level 87, 88 quest each time that you do one of these pet battles. And so basically, uh, I was actually surprised with how how well this pet battle thing turned out. Now, personally, you know, will I be using this for all the rest of my uh, for all the rest of my characters that I'm level? I'm probably gonna level like one more after this, but um, uh, probably not. Uh, I might do it until I get all of my uh, my 75 pets to level 10 achievement. But other than that, it's just really not very fun to me, uh, unless I'm trying to level a specific pet or something like that. But you know, as I said, uh, I would not probably be doing this unless I was able to, in one way or another, kill two birds with one stone. Uh, the pet battles areas that you can use are, there's two areas that are very good. Uh, there's the area that I'm at here, and I'm sorry I don't have these uh, these different spots on the map. I wasn't really sure how I was going to edit and show this video. But uh, basically this is in the, um, what's it called, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms right next to the Golden Lotus Quest Hub, the second one. And uh, it's like the dried out river. And so, I mean, you guys can kind of see, like, in between these pet battles and, you know, orient yourself a little bit. And, uh, basically, I mean, the, these pets that, that I have here, like, they're all, like, flying pets. And that's because most of the pets that I'm fighting are aquatic, and flying does extra damage to aquatic. 
And so uh, you can do that, or you can also fight pets in uh, near half hill. And what's good about those is those are all beasts. And so basically you want a, uh, a pet team that can kind of fight multiple, uh, multiple battles without having to, you know, have any downtime in between. Uh, most flying pets don't really have the capacity for not having downtime. Uh, the best pets that don't have downtime are pets that can somehow heal themselves or like humanoids. And so usually if I was going to use like the half hill leveling method, uh, I would go ahead and use like an Anubis half idol because obviously it can heal itself and it has a lot of health. But anyway, as you guys can see, I mean, I'm getting pretty good amount of experience. And uh, if you do like to do pet battles, this is definitely a very uh, legitimate alternative. But uh, if you don't like to do pet battles, there are other things that are pretty much just as, as just as good. I think questing is maybe 10% faster. I can't really say for sure, but I mean, if I had to put a number on it, that's what I'd say. And so anyway, uh, I mean, pet battles are a good way. Now, I'm going to show you guys something that is uh, kind of crazy. Now, if you go down to Half Hill and you talk to this guy here and you buy these empty uh, containers and you fill them up, you can turn them in as a repeatable quest called Replenishing the Pantry. And you can turn this quest in uh, infinitely, basically, and it just gives you iron part tokens. And so if you have enough food, I watched a guy go from level 85 to level 90 legitimately by turning in this quest in 7 minutes. And I might put a video or a link to the description in the video, or a link to the video in the description. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty cool to see. And basically it's just a repeatable quest and he had a script and he just clicked the script. And each turn in would give him 30,000 experience. Uh, he said that it ran him uh, somewhere between 45 and 67k, if I remember correctly. And so uh, I don't really think it's money efficient, but it was definitely a pretty cool thing to see. And so maybe if you're one of the people that has like millions of gold or whatever, uh, you might want to try and use this method. But uh, I'll give you guys a link to that. And um, honestly, that's pretty much it for the leveling methods. Now, there are a lot of other leveling methods that uh, I didn't really go over. And the reason for that is that I thought that they sucked. Uh, I tried some of them, and they just really weren't even in the running. And so, uh, like, having, like, queuing dungeons, garbage. You know, just killing random mobs, garbage. Um, battlegrounds, garbage. Don't ever do any of that. But, uh, as I said before, uh, if you have somebody with you, you want to try and do the Mantid. And uh, if you don't, you can either do Time Wasile, or if you're sick of questing, or you can just do questing. But, anyway, that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, hopefully this helped you guys. As I said, I see a lot of videos on YouTube that are very inaccurate with how much experience you can get and what the rewards are. And so I really wanted to make a video and just sit down and show you guys, you know, real talk, you know, what it really is. And so hopefully this really helped you guys. And I know it helped me kind of figure out what I, you know, was going to do for my future characters. So thanks for watching. and Mike.